Good afternoon, everyone. It's now 3.30. I will call the Infrastructure, Transportation and Safety Subcommittee to order. Are there any disclosures of pecuniary interest? And if so, the general nature thereof. Seeing none, we'll move on to item number three, which is delegations. And item 3.1 is a presentation by the Reusable Container Project. And we have a, a resolution that the presentation by Vicki Lass on behalf of the Stratford Container Committee be heard. Moved by Councillor Ingram, all in favor? Opposed if any, and that's carried. Um, and Ms. Lass, Vicki, are you on the line? Yes, I am, Madam Chair. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, so we do have a slide deck that I will assume you are looking at. I don't have the bandwidth at the moment to join you uh, visually. Um, and we, are, we appreciate the time today to tell you about an initiative that local citizens, restaurant tours, and uh, the BIA have been working on since fall of 2020. Uh, so if we could go from the title slide to the began fall of 2020 slide number two. Uh, there were, as you as you know, coming through the pandemic, there was definitely a real surge in takeout to help our restaurants survive. Um, but on social media, there was a, a lot of banter about, I'd like to help my restaurants, but I'm really unsettled by the amount of waste that's being created. Um, also in the 2020 Alfresco program, it really highlighted the need for better waste disposal options in the downtown core and frequent pickups. Um, we also heard um, that the COVID shutdowns, it just continued to create extra waste. So during this conversation that was happening amongst neighbors on social media, um, I took the opportunity to chat with Sammy Orr, who you will be familiar with from the Environment and Energy Committee. And we talked about what could we do because there was a, a lot of stress on our local restaurants to survive and then to add um, expense potentially to their um, daily operations in purchasing reusable containers or to have them as they were trying to pivot and survive, have them researching different options just seemed like a lot of additional work uh, for our restaurants. So Sammy and I discussed it. Uh, we, are, we were both keen on moving forward with a plan. And I also wanted to take the opportunity to mentor Sammy in the power of community engagement and this project seemed to support uh, all of those all of those examples or all of those um, goals. So we began to talk to other citizens that were interested in what was going on. We began began to look at examples of people doing it right in Stratford. So people already using reusables or compostables. Um, and we started to reach out to potential partners. Slide three, please. So we identified strategic partners to learn more about the current situation. So to take a look at what was really happening, not just what we assumed was happening. And we began with land, local restaurant owners and interviewed them to say, what would it take for you to switch? Have you looked at any options? What is required by you as a restaurant tour in a takeout container? Um, so why are you making the choices that you're making? And what is the most important determinant? Is it price? Is it availability? Is it storage? Is it the ability to keep food warm? That sort of thing. Then we found to talk to the BIA, Destination Stratford, Invest Stratford, the local community food center, all tangentially related to or involved with um, providing takeout food or local food of some sort. Uh, we also spoke with City of Stratford uh, direct staff like Kate Simpson, who looks after the recycling and garbage and compost programs. And we initially talked to um, Rebecca Garlick, who at the time was the climate change coordinator. We spoke with the Huron Perth Public Health Unit, the Environment and Energy Committee, Climate Momentum, City Council members, um, and also the Stratford Secondary School Eco Club members, Blue Water Recycling and Storm Fisher. Our hope was to help advance the mandates of some of those groups, not to take over, not to re replace, and not to create a new entity. But we really wanted to take that collective impact look and see uh, what needed to be done. So those were the first steps that we did. So during the period from October 2020 to January 2021, Sammy and I had conversations with all of the individuals listed on this slide. On slide four, we've summarized the challenges that were presented to us. So 
cost was a factor, uh, availability of reusable containers. Um, from the health unit perspective during a pandemic, we also looked at how was the cleaning cycle, what was happening to keep people safe from a reusable container being used over and over again. The ability to keep food warm for transport was of great concern for some of the restaurants. Um, so that it was as close to a restaurant presentation when individuals opened it as, at home as it would be if they were in the restaurant or on a patio. There was a lot of concern around petroleum products being used even if they were reusable. Um, disposal options were a concern for um, compostables. And also there seemed to be confusion around what's recyclable, what's compostable in Stratford. So a number of challenges, which really are opportunities, were presented to us as we had held the conversations. So moving forward with that information in mind and somewhat of a baseline established as to what people were doing and what they were comfortable doing, uh, Sammy and I went on and called a public meeting to discuss the current situation and its challenges. So we reached out to um, people within those organizations we talked about before, but also we put the invitation out to um, anyone concerned with environmental issues and interested in potentially working on a project. Um, so we held a public meeting in early February. We had 25 people attend that meeting and 10 actually agreed to form a working group at that time. That working group has been working ever since. Um, and we set our objective to look for, the ultimate goal was to have a reusable program as an option in Stratford with a number of our restaurants. Uh, we also looked at how could we improve composting and recycling information, sort of looking at what goes where, identifying containers and, and where they get sorted properly. And also looking at having more receptacles in public areas so that the opportunity to compost and recycle was very clearly marked and very easy to do by virtue of a number of containers being available. Um, we also discussed and looked at um, a higher degree of service in the downtown core for, in particular, compost pickup, because it does present problems for restaurants to keep their compost for any length of time. Uh, because especially in the summertime, but for pest control, one wants to keep that cold so it doesn't decompose too quickly. And also the the, the aroma and the bugs that can be attracted, uh, those are issues. So a uh, more frequent pickup for downtown compost would be desirable. And then we wanted to make sure that we collected data to understand options currently being used, the challenges, but also as, as we moved forward, hoping to be able to measure the impact of the work being done by the citizens at large. One of the programs that we found, um, we heard presentations on a number of different reusable programs, but one of the programs we found that seemed to be the earliest, the easiest to adapt um, and bring to Stratford was a friendlier company. And so we, in, we invited the two young female engineers, graduates of University of Waterloo, who started a friendlier company during the pandemic to do presentations to restaurant tours. So they did a series of five different presentations where we presented to approximately 15, 16 different restaurant tours. Um, the outcome was and, and you may remember, I was reading the minutes of the meeting from the Environment and Energy Committee. On May the 6th, Sammy reported that three restaurants had adopted the Friendlier Company program. And as of today, 11 restaurants have adopted the Friendlier Company program. Um, we've also looked at uh, reusable coffee cup um, options or compostable coffee cup options that would be um, acceptable to Storm Fisher. And we're researching other elements um, that relate to our goal list that was presented earlier. Um, during the time that the restaurants were learning about a friendlier company and adopting that program, the BIA, the city center um, BIA, sent out a survey focused on being able to establish a baseline to measure future impact, asking what people were using, if they were interested in further presentations, um, if they knew of other programs were of interest that we could do some research on. Anyways, research um, is continuing to be done into other reusable program options. Some of the restaurants opted out because the friendlier company products are a petroleum-based product and they would prefer to use glass or metal. 
Um, but the research done by the owners of a friendlier company is quite thorough, and they're a really good justification for the reason that they chose the products that they did. Um, all of their products are manufactured in Ontario, and at the end of their life, which is 100 reuses, they are taken directly to a recycling facility where, similar to CPR plastics, where they are immediately recycled into an, a, a different product, but everything is done within the province. Um, we are also currently working uh, with the Alfresco program and the city of Stratford to meet the need for waste disposal containers of all types in Market Square and throughout the park system. So that conversation is ongoing to see what we can do to help promote that. Um, and then we're looking at a promotion strategy for how to recycle and compost in Stratford. So additional education information sessions for residents are being planned. And also the Friendlier Company program has a charitable donation element. So if you aren't familiar with Friendlier Company, the way it works is you buy your takeout food. It comes in a reusable container. Um, there's a QR code on the back. You, you download the Friendlier Company app. You scan the QR code um, as you return the container and it deposits 50 cents into your container. It, sorry, into your account per container. You can withdraw that money at any time and it gets paid back to you or you can donate it. And so the most recent um, work we've been doing is talking with those 11 restaurants to say, where would you like charitable, charitable donations directed? Um, at the moment, they're directed to, the only option on a friendlier company website is a food program, a food bank program in Guelph. Um, so our restaurants are exploring um, charitable donation options like the Indian Residential School Survivor Program, um, our local United Way, um, and various other programs in Stratford. So they're working directly with a friendlier company on that after we started that discussion. Next slide, please. On the horizon, so the Energy and Environment Committee are taking on the education piece, uh, the education piece, including um, not only promoting compost and how it works in Stratford with Storm Fisher as a guest speaker, but also Blue Water Recycling, as well as including the Waste app so people are more aware that they there is an app that they can go on and it will tell you how to sort for the city, sort your um, garbage recycling and compost for the city of Stratford. The BIA is um, starting a pilot to work with downtown restaurants and continuing to survey them. Uh, we're in. Com we actually have committee members, uh, working group members, I should say, from Rotary, and we're in con conversation about support, supporting the, the reusable container um, movement at local food fundraisers, raisers like Ribfest, and putting out the challenge to other organizations who hold food events to do the same. Um, as I said, we're looking for reusable coffee cups and lids that could be adopted citywide. Um, the BIA is catching people doing it right, so promoting not just those using a friendlier company, but for example, um, the brunches that are served from Revel Cafe that have reusable containers, uh, Soup to Real has reusable elements, and, and um, the Pulp Fresh Juice Bar, although using a friendlier company, they also have other reusable elements. So we're looking at continuing to promote um, everyone doing something right in the city through social media. And we're continuing the dialogue with regard to single-use plastics. So in addition to the fact that there are now 11 restaurants on board with reusables, which we're quite excited about, just to give you a sense, some of the restaurants I've spoken to are using between 1,000 and 1,500 of those containers per week. Um, so new new questions are arising, like where do they store them in between the weekly pickup and delivery from a friendlier company because their establishments don't quite have the capacity to hold out for a full week, but a friendlier company is also a growing business and they don't have the capacity yet to pick up more than once a week. So working some kinks out, but things are working really well, and I think when you extrapolate that thousand containers a week over 11 restaurants, it it is different for each restaurant, but just as an average, um, the project has already had a great impact on um, takeout containers in Stratford. I'd like to invite Jeff Love, one of our working group members, to present the next slide. So moving on to slide eight. Jeff might need to be unmuted to be able to do this. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can, Jeff. Yes. Great. Thanks very much. 
Yeah, thanks for the background. Because brief back introduction, I'm the guy that brought Blue Box program to Kitchener uh, 35 short years ago and work all across Canada and parts of Europe on these kinds of programs. So I was really excited when Vicky came with this idea because it's it really is quite unique to see two citizens, particularly Vicky and uh, and Sammy, come together with this idea. And rather than just sort of start shutting from the rooftops, engage restaurateurs, engage BIA, engage Rotary. So I just want to make sure that the, the, that the committee, with all due respect, understands, I'd say, the, the importance of this initiative, this voluntary initiative that also needs your support. So in terms of what, why we wanted to have this call is that we want to make sure there are regular meetings. We want to make sure there's a direct line of communication with with council, with your committee, with council, and with, uh, with, with staff, because there are things that come up in those meetings that we think um, um, it would be helpful to have the city uh, plugged in on and not sort of be the, the last one to find out about it. Um, as this, Vicky said, part of what's driving this whole issue is that we think there's a very strong interest in uh, green initiatives in general, and you all know on your committee that the next big um, issue that uh, that we're going to be dealing with in the city is the whole issue of of an actual climate action plan. Which, which again, I'm not saying that this is primarily climate action related, but it's very green related and it's very high profile and very broadly supported. So we think it's important for the city to uh, to acknowledge and and support this. And then when you look at other things we might be looking at uh, coming to the committee, things like um, more more citywide containers for both recycling and garbage, um, more fulsome composting program, particularly for restaurants. I think it's going to be it's a challenging program, but something to take a look at. And this whole area is called away from home recycling. And one of the good news, again, for you folks is that Kate Simpson, who's the staff on this, is one of the really one of the top people in Ontario on these issues. So you're, we're all lucky to have uh, not only a local citizen group by, led by Vicky and, and Sammy, but also Kate, who's very knowledgeable. And I, I, the whole purpose of this presentation is to say to you folks, let's make sure that, that uh, this committee is plugged in with, again, with you as a, as a, as a formal committee of council, but also with city staff on, on future waste diversion and hopefully greenhouse gas reduction measures. So that's, that's, my, that's my two cents worth. Thank you, Jeff. And just had um, sort of a frame of reference when we talk about better composting options for downtown restaurants or for restaurants throughout the city. At the moment, my understanding is that the restaurants can have up to five of the household compost containers, and then that's picked up on a weekly basis. So earlier I mentioned the challenge with storage, but I also want to help frame for you a bit of an understanding of how much food um, food would be available for compost from an individual restaurant. So my husband and I farm, for those of you who don't know us, um, we run a farm and we have, we had for years participated in a program with the Stratford Chef School where we took away only pre-plate waste. So not the scrapings, but the trimmings off, you know, carrot tops or uh, vegetable peels. We would take that away. We would pick up two to three times a week and take that back to the farm to feed our pigs. Um, and that was why it had to be pre-plate because pigs can catch human diseases. So pre-plate waste. And in those two to three pickups a week, we would take between each pickup would be between five and 10, ten five and 10, five gallon pails of pre-plate waste. So if you think about a restaurant and that it would produce a lunch and a dinner, not just a dinner like the chef's school. Um, there, you know, there's different variables affecting them, but five containers would be what they would produce maybe in a day um, of compost. And so right now, what's available to our restaurateurs is not adequate for them to fully commit to a composting program and begin to even solve some of the other issues like storage. So I just wanted to frame that for you um, moving forward because I thought it would be of interest to you. So at this point, uh, our final slide is that we would be more than happy to entertain um, any questions that you might have at this point. Are there any questions from subcommittee? Councillor Gaffney. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you, I guess one of the questions I'd ask is this not something that would fit into the, under the Valley Wackaby Energy and Environment Committee that 
uh, it would be something they they take on and coordinate on behalf of the city. Um, and they they would come to the city with any uh, any ideas or actions. So, thanks. So uh, through you through you. Sorry. Go ahead. Through you, Madam Chair. Our um, our ambition is not to own this project or continue to control it, but to participate in it. And we would be very much interested in either the BIA taking it on for the downtown restaurants or the E and E committee taking it over um, on behalf of the city. So there, we we have no desire to create another level of committee. Um, we just felt that during the pandemic, a lot of people had enough on their plates and that this was something we could start. Um, and as I said before, I wanted to take the opportunity to um, mentor one of your most enthusiastic young environmentalists who sits on the e, e committee in the power of community engagement and what a, just an average citizen could accomplish um, if they set their mind to it and the proper way to, well, not the proper way, an effective way to accomplish those things. So yes, Councillor Gaffney, it would be great if this was taken on by the E&E &E committee, but um, we wanted to get it started as a group of private citizens. We're happy to turn it over to an appropriate level of government. So, so just for clarity, because one of the slides that you had asked if staff and um, a and the counselors were willing, wanted to participate in the monthly meetings. But are you looking for this committee to end up being housed somewhere within either the BIA or the city structure? I'm just looking for some clarity between what was on the slide and what, what I just heard just now. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair, and through you. Um, we're in no rush to download the committee right now. We're in conversations with the E&E &E committee and we're in conversation with the BIA as to who might lead, like to lead the project or, or work together to keep the project moving forward. Um, but we don't feel that the summer is the time for that to be turned over. We're interested in um, everybody working collaboratively um, in the future. So for example, the E&E &E committee has already committed to it is my understanding from Sammy that the E&E &E committee um, has already committed to running some of those public education sessions and possibly in conjunction with climate momentum. Um, so we're not actually asking for anyone to house it today. We wanted to make, today we wanted to make you aware of the project. We wanted to make you aware of what the citizens were doing and the accomplishments to date. Um, and we're more than happy to discuss in the future where this should lie. We also wanted to give you sort of the heads up of things that we might be asking for. Um, so, you know, we we do appreciate that city staff has been able to give us some time um, and that councillors have attended periodically the work the working group meetings we have, which are once a month. Um, but it's more about looking to you to say, we'll probably need some more containers in the in the park area um, we appreciate and hope to continue having staff time to work on this and then to address Councillor Gaffney's question. It is not our intent to stay a permanent committee looking after this. It is our intent for it to go elsewhere, um, but those conversations are just in progress right now. Perfect. Thank you for the clarification. Councillor Burbach, you had a question or a comment? Yes, just wanted to say thank you for the presentation and all the work that you've done. Uh, it's really great. And um, it, to me, it makes sense that this could possibly become a working group of the Energy and Environment Committee. We already have a couple of working groups um, which can have members of, you know, that are just volunteers that, that help out. So, uh, and, and being that Sammy's also on E&E, &E, it, it's sort of a natural progression that we might be able to spin it into a working group. And, uh, and that would, I think that would serve everybody's needs. Um, I do like the idea of the BIA also being involved, though, because they do have more of the expertise of, with restaurants and so on. Um, so, yeah, I can see a collaboration there being pretty important as well. Thank you. And, and I will say we had quite a bit of success with an active transportation advisory committee working group that included 
you know, the health unit, the BIA, um, a number of different organizations around active transportation. So this does sound like something that could. Um, I'm wondering in terms of process, and, and thank you for the presentation. I've already got an account and I've already got $2.50 owed to me. So it's <laughs> fantastic. If we could donate it somewhere, that would be a really, really great option. Um, I do have a question. Is, it, is this something that, and I'm looking maybe to the clerk, a referral to the Energy and Environment um, Committee to consider um, a more formal uh, participation with this committee? Or is that something we can just uh, leave with Councillor Burbeck as a member of E&E &E to, to take forward? Councillor Gaffney? I just, I, I just wonder, uh, and again, through you, Madam Chair, uh, I think we have to have further discussion, and maybe that's through the clerk's department about how how the relationship between what is essentially private enterprise in the community and a program that's going to quite possibly directly, uh, you know, if if. It sounds like it might become a benefit to the restaurants downtown. So we, I think we have to be careful that we're not uh, providing a subsidy to private business. So I think there's some for, uh, there might be some further discussion to have, but uh, thank you. And if I may, Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead. Through, through you, I just wanted to um, just comments on Councillor Gaffney's remarks in that what we're seeking right now is a a next level waste program um, and that includes the waste that has definitely increased from restaurants due to the pandemic and their limitation to takeout. So when we look to the city for any sort of investment, it's more around infrastructure that supports any sort of waste in public areas. Um, and then also, I mean, if a conversation was held with restaurant tours about their access to a composting program, that's definitely investment on the city's part, but that is definitely a conversation um, around the city and and that segment of trying to reroute some of the waste, some of what's going into waste now that could go into compostables. Um, so there isn't a large ask around funding for in a, funding for the program at all, and certainly not to the benefit of any particular business, um, but to the benefit of the city so that people are not coming to visit and seeing overflowing waste containers in the market square or the park system um, and do have the option to recycle or to compost as well as to toss things in the garbage. And I do believe that as Stratford promotes itself as a greener destination, these are important things to look at. And people are interested in um, municipalities who are conscientious about their waste. So I hope that helps to clarify what we're actually looking at. Um, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Vicki. Uh, Councillor Ingram? Um, did, did you have a comment? Yes. I do, yes, thank you. Um, so I think this is a great program and I, I do see a little bit of collaboration with the BIA, but I don't want us to limit ourselves um, just to the restaurants downtown because we do have a number of independently run um, restaurants that are outside of the BIA boundaries. Um, and I would think that they would also be interested in participating in this program. So I like that it is housed with um, e and &E, or could be housed with E&E &E as a, a working group because um, they certainly have the broader outreach to encompass the entire city as opposed to the BIA who are restricted to those the BIA boundary businesses. Um, so I, I, I like the connection to E&E. &E. So, so if I may, uh, and I do think that, that it would be really good um, for um, the, the community group that has done a really a lot of legwork and a lot of consultation and a lot of the things that we usually pay a lot of money to be done, right, in, in some of these projects. And, and I really would like to capture our support for some of this work and, and certainly around SAMI. So I'm wondering if we could just simply refer, um, refer this project to 
energy and environment for consideration. Um, and, and maybe Council Burbeck can actually take some of the points that have been made today and bring them to energy and environment and see, you know, where they might like to take this and who, what other partners they may be able to bring to the table because Councillor Ingram is correct. Well, the BAA might want to sit on there. There may be additional um, uh, restaurants and, and you know, I, I'm thinking there are other, in other um, institutional uh, waste programs that we could be looking at. So, um, again, that would, could, uh, would anybody like to make that referral, Councillor Burbach? Um, any other questions on that? No? Madam Chair, if I may, one last point of clarification. When the survey, original survey was sent out by the BIA and invitations were issued to hear presentations, not only from a friendlier company, but other um, reusable container programs, we did use both um, Destination Stratford's list, the BIA list, and then just legwork of restaurants that we knew to try and invite as many restaurants as possible. So they, those outside the core were not excluded in the initial consultations. Um, but as Councillor Ingram noted, the BIA is restricted to working within its own area, but they have stretched those boundaries a little bit in the initial consultations that they participated in um, with this committee. Perfect, thank you, that's great. Okay. Any other comments or questions on that? All in favor? Opposed if any, and that's carried. And thank you very much, Vicki and Jeff for the presentation. It's really exciting to see that, that level of grassroots uh, activism that actually accomplishes something fairly quickly. So, and congratulations to Sammy as well, because I know she's a huge driver on a lot of these with not only her enthusiasm, but she's pretty tenacious when she wants to be as well. So thank you. She, she certainly is. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it and have a great day, everyone. Bye. Okay, so, so we'll move on now to report of the Manager of Environmental Services and item 4.1 is the COVID Ontario Wastewater Surveillance Initiative. And this is really pretty exciting. For, as, as a biochemist, I'm really fascinated by this project. So Mr. Bowes, did you wanna actually uh, speak to it really quickly before we move on to the staff recommendation? Uh, yes, of course, uh, through you, Madam Chair. So uh, basically the province committed to investing $12 million to a COVID-19 uh, wastewater surveillance initiative. and. To this point, uh, there's been 32 of 34 uh, public health units that have come on board with it. So the MECP reached out to me a few weeks ago um, to see if we'd be interested in joining as well. Um, they've targeted the wastewater treatment plant in the city of Stratford, as well as the wastewater treatment plant in Goderich. Um, just because of the population size, the likelihood of potential um, surges in COVID cases, that sort of thing. So it's a little more towards larger municipalities and would be smaller municipalities. Um, so yeah, they've initially, they told us that they have enough funding to incorporate us as well. So it's something that we thought we should certainly get involved in. And I know, uh, Madam Chair, you hosted an OMWA seminar on this uh, months ago. So you're quite familiar with the uh, WBE and a lot of this work. So um, just a quick update since I first sent in the manager report, uh, they notified us that McMaster University would be the university involved with the city of Stratford for the testing. And essentially what they do is the wastewater treatment plant um, takes what's called a composite sample which is um, intermittent samples throughout a given time period to create one giant mix of a sample. So it gives you um, a good range covering ages, uh, genders, uh, people who have COVID, people who don't, people who are symptomatic, asymptomatic, vaccinated, not vaccinated, getting tested, not getting tested. So basically it covers an entire subpopulation um, with these tests. So we, uh, in working with uh, the o OW, or sorry, Aqua, who operate our wastewater treatment facility for us uh, under contract. Um, Aqua is actually a big proponent of this, the corporation itself, this program. So um, speaking with them, they were completely on board with working with us uh, within the city of Stratford to do this. Um, extremely minimal on the, in the sense that they would basically be taking a sample that they already take. They've already got the equipment uh, set up for it, the testing equipment. Uh, there's very, very little labor involved in, in becoming a part of this. And essentially how they have been using this throughout the province already with municipalities that already have it set up is it really gives good insight to what 
um, for, for predictive modeling. So it doesn't give you a case number like the clinical tests do, which give you a firm number of how many um, people have been tested that have COVID. What this does is it gives uh, biomarkers for early COVID-19 detection. So it gives, it gives you predictive modeling essentially where you can see you know, several days to potentially longer ahead of time when a spike might be coming to a particular municipality. So uh, just a few examples of this, the city of Ottawa knew, and they're one of the forefront um, communities that have been doing this. They knew in early April that there was a big spike coming, which ended up being the wave. Um, and they were able to predict that ahead of time. The city of Waterloo had a spike a couple of months ago, you may recall, very similar in that sense, they saw it was coming. So there's a lot of benefits to this, especially with the health unit, because um, they can allocate their resources based on this. So if they see a big surge coming, maybe a week ahead of time, they know they're going to get a big influx of traffic for people wanting to get tests. So they may be able to, to staff more for clinical testing. They may get more, much more traffic on their websites for people booking that sort of thing. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of that, uh, a lot of the benefits that can come out of that. So, um, yeah, it's just a great opportunity for the city of Stratford and, uh, very fortunate that we were asked to be a part of it. So, um, yeah, take any questions. Councillor Gaffney. I'll move the staff recommendation, Madam Chair. Perfect, thank you. And I'm I'm actually quite excited because when it is an early warning system, but what I really like about this project when we presented it with the OMWA is that um, this isn't this isn't the only pandemic. I mean, hopefully there won't be another one. But what I like is is the, the is once you establish um, the testing uh, protocols, not only will you be able to actually find um, let's say new variants that may be actually coming along, but actually um, new pathogens that you may be able to just tap into it, into a surveillance system. And what I really like about it is, is that we already know that cases precede hospitalization by quite a, a, a long lag time. And so traditionally looking at testing at hospitalization or when people show up at a hospital, you're already probably a few weeks behind on on monitoring, so this is a really fascinating um, approach to to um, disease surveillance. So it's really interesting. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed, if any, and that's carried. Thank you very much. And so we'll move on to item number five is report of the events coordinator and the resolution is a request for exemption from noise control bylaw for the wedding at a private residence at 378 William Street. And um, Ms. Jordan, did you wanna to talk to this item briefly? Uh, yes, through the chair. Um, so we were approached by homeowners of 378 William Street. Um, as mentioned, it is for a private event, it's for a wedding. And um, they did circulate letters as per the usual process and no comments were received. They did have some neighbors reach out in support of the event, which is great. So the event itself would take place at 3.30 p.m. on Saturday, September 4th and go until midnight. Are there any questions, Councillor Ingram? I'll just move the staff recommendation. Great, any comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed, if any, and that's carried. Thank you very much. And so next is item number six, which is the capital project update. Mr. Kinclaw, did you want to hit any of the highlights on your report? It was circulated for everyone. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll keep it brief. Um, some of the bigger highlights is the uh, Queen Street trunk storm sewer closes tomorrow. So I know everyone's waiting to hear that. Uh, Cedar Street, there's a culvert replacement scheduled for early August. Um, Romeo Street work is ongoing, uh, mostly uh, prep work before the actual resurfing work begins. Um, just like to mention that the Huron Street reconstruction will be having a virtual open house uh, sometime in August, and that will be a big project for 2022. Um, development uh, is still, um, we're still very busy in development, uh, quite busy there. Uh, one thing I'd also like to mention is the, uh, as you just saw, Johnny Bowes, the manager of environmental services. He was selected to be a member to represent uh, the City of Stratford, St. Mary's, Huron, and Perth regions as the uh, UTRCA Source Water Protection Committee. So that's that's good news. Um, and grass cutting is uh, continuing with throughout the city. So if you can be patient, though, we will get there for ditches and uh, the like. 
Uh, the last thing uh, uh, I'll mention is the um, we had a successful household hazardous waste day last Saturday with uh, uh, almost uh, 800 vehicles going through our our doors. So that's that's good news. A lot of uh, hazardous waste being diverted from our landfill. And uh, the one more thing I will I uh, will mention is just a quick update uh, regarding the uh, the RNG project. Um, so basically, this past May, uh, this project was uh, re-engaged by staff. Um, we have been in discussions with the various uh, stakeholders involved. Um, we are still awaiting some outstanding reports, uh, which we expect to receive quite soon. Um, and that uh, staff will uh, anticipate bringing a report to council to seek further direction. So there's not too much to update from that standpoint. However, there'll be a more fulsome report uh, expected shortly. Thank you very much. Any, any comments or questions on that? Councillor Burbeck? Thank you. Yeah, I just had a quick question about the grass cutting um, and just thinking about the environmental impact of, of running gas powered mowers. And it, I'm just wondering how often is it is really necessary to mow ditches. Um, and, it, you know, I don't know if it affects water flow or whatever, but um, just wondering what our policy is. Do we, you know, is there, is there a, a height or or something that that has to be met. I don't know if there are restrictions or can we sort of let things go a little bit uh, for the sake of the environment. Yeah, great question um, through the chair. Um, what's in place is an internal practice uh, that we try to adhere to. Um, first and foremost, uh, ditches need to be cut at least on an annual basis and this is to stop uh, tree growth or anything else that could become out of control and more difficult to maintain. Um, we don't uh, cut um, that often. Uh, we do it uh, two to four times a year is kind of the goal uh, for the most part. Um, in terms of monitoring the, the growth, there is no um, as long as there's no trees or more brush growing, it, uh, the drainage works will work adequately from that standpoint, but we do try to keep uh, an eye on if there are uh, noxious weeds or anything else growing and address that when they do come up. Okay, right, thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, um, item number seven is just advisory committee and outside board minutes there for you to read at your leisure. Our next subcommittee meeting will be August 25th at 3.30 p.m. And the final item number nine is motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Burbeck. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a nice afternoon.